In this section we're going to look at how we can create documents for use outside of Microsoft Word and in this exercise we're going to be using the parking rules practice file which you can find in the chapter 11 folder. Now we want to be able to save it in different formats so we go to the file tab on the ribbon and we'll select save as. Now if we just selected save it would save it as a Word document which you'll see here. Now this will open quite happily in uh, Microsoft uh, Word 2007 and Microsoft Word 2010 but won't necessarily open in versions of Word before that because Microsoft changed to the file format with Word 2007. Now there is, you'll see here, you can download from the Microsoft website if you do a search for the Microsoft Office compatibility pack you can download um, a, a plugin for earlier versions of Microsoft Office that will allow you to open the new uh, file formats introduced with Office 2007. And you can also get uh, a Microsoft Office compatibility pack for uh, the Apple Mac as well. So that's a, uh, a simple search. Now let's have a look at some of the other uh, file formats we've got here. We've got macro enabled documents. If you have macros that you use at work um, or at home in your documents, you can save it as a macro enabled uh, document. Macros are little programs um, to do specific tasks within the document itself. Bear in mind though that um, certainly within some business and corporate environments, uh, macros may be blocked by default uh, because they can uh, on occasion um, handle uh, uh, contain malware. There is an uh, Word 97 to 2003 document and this will enable you to um, maintain backwards compatibility with earlier versions but if you're using features that are new to Word 2007 or Word 2010 then those features won't work once you save the document. You can save your document as a template. Let's say you lay out the page with the, the borders and the, the page colour and the, the, uh, the, the different header types the way you want them. You can then save that as a template and you can open this template and create new documents with that as a template. Again you can save that with macros and in compatibility mode. You can save it as a uh, an Adobe PDF portable document file. Um, now bear in mind that the options that you would have in the full version of Adobe Acrobat such as um, inserting digital rights management and other features like that aren't available in Word but it's a very very quick and simple way of being able to save as PDF files and you haven't been able to do this natively in any other version of Word uh, before even though it was a, a plugin that was available for Word 2007 there's XBS documents which is Microsoft's own um, uh, portable document format and uh, Windows Vista and Windows 7 natively can open XPS documents Windows XP can do it with a plugin and uh, and then we move on to uh, web pages which we'll look at in the next section I want to have a look at rich text format uh, documents rich text format is an industry standard word processing document it doesn't support all the a lot of the fancy stuff a lot of the presentation stuff that's in modern uh, versions of word and excel and whatnot but um, rich text format for word processors every word processor will open rich text format documents and it's a great way of being able to distribute basic and basic and ordinary documents uh, quickly without having any trouble with them. You can save it as a plain text file which you would open with notepad for instance and then we can save them as uh, XML documents um, which is a, a more open uh, code based way of, of saving documents um, and they are you, you will probably want a specific scenario uh, to save XML documents um, and then there are uh, other options here including uh, saving it in a uh, version uh, format that's compatible with um, the now defunct and withdrawn Microsoft Works. So these are the different uh, formats that you can select. You pick the one you want, let's say we want to save it as a PDF and you may be given additional options here so we'll click the options and we can choose a page range for instance and 
uh, we can encrypt the document with a password if we want to again remember that's not digital rights management that's just a password and there are various other options that you will see if we want to save it as a Word 97 2003 document for instance uh, there are fewer options uh, save it as an XPS document and so on so those options will change depending on what you want to save it as and why and it's worth bearing in mind what you want it to be used for if you want it to be edited don't save it as a PDF or an XPS document if you want it to be used on earlier versions of Word save it as um, a, uh, a Word 97 2003 document or a rich, rich text document especially if you want it to be read on, uh, on an Apple Mac for instance um, in order to maintain compatibility but if you save it as a Word document by default yes it will save all of the 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 really latest presentation stuff that's in Word 2010 but some people may not be able to open the file press the save button when you're ready to save the file now that's it for this section and in the next section we're going to look at creating and modifying documents for the web Now while Word 2010 is no substitute for a proper software package for creating websites, you can create basic websites from documents. In this exercise, we're going to be using the Room Planner Web Practice file, which you can find in the Chapter 11 folder. And we want to go to the File menu and select the Save As options. Here we've got several web options. Let's have a look first at Single File Web Page. Now what this uh, will do is it will create one file which contains all of our uh, all of the documents associated with the web page be that the the main page document the graphics anything else all in a single file we'll want to change the title of it because web pages need a title so we'll call it room planner and press ok and you can see it now, now has a title and we'll press save now the compatibility checking checker is here telling us that there are a couple of issues um, that aren't supported by web browsers and uh, and it will change those and now if we open this chapter 11 folder there's a new file here um, which is an MHTML document and we open that that will open in a web browser and there's our document just in the one document now <clears throat> let's go back here and look at uh, the other save as options for the web let's save it as a web page now we've still got the the title here we can change it if we want and we want to save it as a web page now this has uh, saved it here in a, uh, a folder um, which contains all of the necessary files and images for that web page and here we have an Internet Explorer HTML document you open that and that will open as per normal but if we deleted that folder for instance when we go to open the uh, the document things like all the graphics are missing because it doesn't know how it doesn't know where to find them so that's the difference between a single file um, web document and a uh, uh, an ordinary web document so let's have a look at some more options for saving as a website. Now here we have tools here for saving as a web page. So we'll go and have a look at the web options here. Click on that. Now here we can reduce the overall file size. We can maintain compatibility with different web browsers. Here we can say that uh, people who view this web page will be using which versions of Internet Explorer. Uh, we can uh, allow or deny uh, specific features within uh, uh, within the files uh, we can organize supporting files in a folder or we can turn this off and they will all appear uh, together in the uh, in the same place in that chapter 11 folder um, we can turn off the use of long file names to maintain full compatibility with uh, with websites we can uh, uh, set the the target screen size for that uh, for that document here we can change that uh, up and up and down let's say it's going to be 800 by 600 for uh, very small screens and there are other options here including um, 
the uh, alternative fonts um, available if uh, the fonts we're using in the document aren't aren't available to that web browser so we can click OK there press save again now it's telling us here we've chosen to use short file names uh, the name needs to be eight characters or less and it will automatically rename the uh, uh, the uh, the document and it's telling us here it can't so we have to go back into the web options turn that long file name back on and save it again now here we have again room planner web start that opens in internet explorer that has all the the documents and if needs be the graphics are uh, reduced in size and uh, and it, it's easier to work with in for the uh, the files in here so that's how we save documents for use on the web and in the next segment we're going to have a look at how we publish blog posts from Word 2010. In addition to creating basic web pages you can also use Microsoft Word 2010 for blogging and in this exercise we're going to be using the uh, practice file blog post which you can find in the chapter 11 folder. Now what we want to do is click on the file tab and instead of going to the save as options this time as we would for a web page we want to go to save and send because we're actually sending the document somewhere straight away. We want to choose publish as blog post. Now here the supported blogging sites uh, include uh, SharePoint, WordPress, Blogger, Windows Live Spaces, Community Server and Typepad and you may be able to set up other blogging services if you use another one. You want to click the Publish as Blog Post button. Now be asked do you want to register your blog account? So yes, we'll want to register and you'll want to choose your blog provider. My blog, blog provider is WordPress so we'll choose WordPress here and click the next button. Now you'll be asked to enter the uh, URL, the web address of your uh, of your blog. Let's say it's my new blog dot com, and you'll be asked to enter your username and your password. And do you want Word to remember your password? Yes or no. There are also picture options here. Now, do you want the uh, pictures automatically uploaded to your blog provider? or to another server or do you not want pictures uploaded at all there are several options there when you've entered your username and password press the OK button and your document will then automatically be published online into your blog and it's a, a very good way of being able to blog using Word 2010 well that's it for this section in the next section we're going to look at uh, more text techniques